Hallo miteinander, I'm your Shady Six, and this is Metroid 2 Return of Samus. Last time, we killed a bunch of Omega Metroids and reduced our Metroid counter down to one. Now if we were lazy, we could just hope that it's like the birds and the bees, and one Metroid would die out on its own, but we simply can't be sure. I mean, I'm not a Metroid expert, so since we didn't barge into any private meetings on our journey, we have to kill that very last one as well. Since I already mentioned our Metroid counter, it has been acting very strangely lately, hasn't it? Last time we paused the game, it didn't display a number for Metroids in the current sector at all, even though it should have been one. That is very mysterious. What does it mean? Well, I'm not going to outright tell you, of course. I think you know me better than that. Just then, we've entered Sector 10. Now that sector is a strange one. Remember when I told you last time that small critters were getting increasingly rare? Well, this sector is almost completely abandoned, dead and empty. At least the beginning part. At first glance, all these empty passageways don't seem to have any purpose, but I think they do. I think they really help build up the atmosphere. You'll start feeling more and more tense, always expecting a surprise, and at some point you'll ask yourself, are you the hunter or the hunted? But apart from this constant emptiness, there's still something else to this segment. Sometimes you can spot odd colored blocks inside of the little goo puddles. If you happen to step on those, guess what, they're illusionary and you'll fall right through, sometimes even setting you back a few rooms. That can be slightly inconvenient. If you're just playing the game for yourself, of course, but say if you're going for a speedrun and you lose time in that big of a margin, well, that's a real catastrophe. You can forget about that run. But no matter the circumstances, just try to avoid the sticky water, just like we did here, so that you don't waste any time. Now this room holds the very last save point of the game. If you plan to use any one at all, use this one. Beyond it is a big open area that is easily climbed by continuous use of space jumps. I hope you've gotten good at these yet, because if you haven't, you're gonna spend a while here. There are several openings in the ceiling of this area, and we want to explore all of them. Working our way rightmost to leftmost, we're gonna clear them out. That way, we can get everything we need before we head towards the final stretch. Part of this preparation was the full refill that we just got, but we also need something very important from the center area. It is a beam that we have picked up once before in our adventure, that we are already familiar with, and it's located in some ruins, that really deserve that name. The beam in question may not be the best beam, but it is undoubtedly the coolest. The Ice Beam. Yes, the Ice Beam. Why would we want a beam so outdated? Because we have to. There is something coming our way that we will not be able to overcome with any other beam. There is simply no way of doing it without. But now that we have that in hand, we can finally move on through the third opening in this area and that will actually lead us forward for a change. Into an area that has very creepy music. So creepy that it made me slip up. Come on, don't be too harsh on a little scaredy cat like me. But in all seriousness, the air is getting heavier again. We have no idea what awaits us in these passageways. The Metroid may be lurking around the next corner. Either that, or another nasty surprise. It's the latter. What is this? Our Metroid counter is going bonkers! Well, Samus, that's what you get for buying equipment made in Space Taiwan. Seriously. Unfortunately, we have a brand new batch on our hands now, and the earliest form of Metroid is not an Alpha Metroid, but a Larval Metroid. This is also the most iconic form of Metroid, very well known to players of the first game. Their gelatinous skin is completely impervious to ballistics, so you'll need to freeze them with the Ice Beam first. Then you can wail on them, and five missiles will get the job done. Now the odd thing about larval metroids is that they are oddly stronger than alpha metroids, much more dangerous because they can latch onto you and suck away your energy really quickly. Now I really don't plan on demonstrating that here, please forgive me. The thing is, it's a little bit tricky to get free again. You have to turn into a ball and keep laying bombs until you get lucky. 
Until you do so, expect to lose at least 30 or so health. You know, I have to give these Metroids something. They're really good horror monsters. Not because they're strong or anything, but because they're cunning and swift. I think it's the erratic movement. It can really make you nervous. Though in Metroid 2, they're really not as dangerous as they could be. They're spread very far apart, and that makes it very unlikely that you can get grabbed by two of them at once. In Metroid on the NES, that is something that could happen. If you ever got grabbed by two Metroids at once, you were pretty much done for. In this game, not so much. You'd have to force another one on screen, it's not gonna happen by accident. And that was really close there. But we have killed all eight of the new larvas. And with that, the way to the final confrontation is clear. You can already hear it growling, it must have some huge lungs. We have no choice, we must face it. So enter the Metroid Queen. It takes a total of 150 missiles to kill her, but even though that's a huge number, there are a few ways to speed up the process. Tricks if you want. On some of her lunges, she will open up her mouth, and if you can land a direct hit into it, you can curl up into a ball and force yourself down her throat. Exploding just one bomb down there counts for a damage of 15 missiles in total, but that's not even all. If you continue to roll into her stomach and explode that, you can deal even more damage. I think 25 missiles. Can't really confirm the exact number, but whatever it is, it is totally worth it. As a kid, I never really knew of these tricks. I only found out much later when I saw others do it. So back then, I would simply use the stun to keep unloading more missiles into the Queen Metroid. All in all, that works I guess, but only if you have the necessary stock of ammunition. In case you do run out of missiles during the fight, you will have to flee from it, and you can do so by rolling down the small chasm on the lower left. Of course, we're not going to do that, we're in it to win it. When the queen is getting close to death, she will get ridiculously fast, and that is already the case now. At that point you shouldn't try to avoid her attacks all that much, and instead just hope for a lucky stun, like that. Of course, you should still avoid her acidic spit if you can, but that's generally easy if you have the screw attack to cancel it out. Well, a few more hits should do it, and there we go. That was a quick victory, not a very elegant one. We took a lot of damage, but in the end the queen is no more, and the planet SR388 has been cleared of all of the metroids. Or has it? Well, currently it has, but now it has no more. This is the baby. Since we're the first thing that this little booger saw, it thinks we're its mother. That's just how it is for infant Metroids. The major gimmick of this escape scene is that we can use the baby Metroid to eat away the diamond-shaped rocks that bar our path. It's... it's like we're feeding it with a baby's bottle. Ship. Whoops, I think I channeled my inner Jessica Martin there. Anyway, this sequence is not a very long one, which is a good thing because it's not the most exciting. You're not really punished for anything, you cannot really do anything wrong here, you're not timed at all. At this point in the franchise it really wasn't a thing for Metroid games yet to have a timed escape at the end. I mean, Metroid 1 had it, but yeah, it didn't really become iconic until Super Metroid. After that, Metroid games simply had to have a countdown somewhere. Mostly at the end, sometimes in between. Metroid 2 actually happens to be the only game in the series that doesn't have that at all. Nope. But back to what's happening. We have left behind the tunnels of SR388, and after so long, we can see the stars in the sky again. That means that our spaceship is not very far away from us anymore. Only a few more screens, and we're back in the clear. We'll have completed our mission and saved the galaxy. But one question remains. Can we do a three-pointer? Can we win the playoffs? Any second now? Nope. Unfortunately not. You know, that's a little quirk of mine. I always try to land in the open hatch of the ship. Just a little thing I like to try. Barely ever works though. And there you have it. Our journey is over. We have completed our mission well, kind of. We've actually completely disregarded our orders, and instead of just killing all Metroids, we have brought home a freshly hatched youngling. Samus can sit back and take a rest now. But if you know how the saga continues, you know that that rest will be a short one. 
things are already in motion, and the galaxy is by no means at peace. But for now, we can watch the credits roll. I'm really thankful that these hardworking people made this great game possible. Even though I know that Metro 2 doesn't have a particularly good reputation in this series, I still think that it had a lot of sound design choices, and as I've said before, it really helped shape the sequels. However, I think now you have something else on your mind. You want to know which of the endings we got. Well, there are four endings in total. The worst one will be given to you if you've taken more than five hours to beat the game, possibly because it's your first time and you've been still bumbling around everywhere. Then Samus will just keep running after the credits, like she is now. If it takes you less than five hours to finish the game, Samus will come to a stop and pose in her cool and stylish suit for you. But as nice as that suit is, you don't actually want to see it, do you? You will only get the best ending if you finish in less than three hours. And have we done that? Well, if you kept track of the video times, you will know that we were indeed very fast. In fact, never before have I beaten the game as fast as I did for this Let's Play. So we have indeed done it. We have qualified for the best ending. And what do we get for it? Well, we're gonna have to wait a few more seconds until the climax of the song. We have beaten the game in 1 hour and 44 minutes. And we get a bikini-clad Samus for that. Oh right, I mentioned the fourth ending. If you happen to play for more than 99 hours, Samus will take off her suit, but it's Anthony Higgs in a G-string. Nah, it's not. There is no fourth ending. Come on. Back then, Anthony wasn't even canon. So, with that, another Let's Play is concluded. I have to admit it was really nice for me to revisit this game after so many years. And I hope you enjoyed watching as well. I'm Gesh86, this was Metroid 2 Return of Samus, and next time we'll have something different again. What exactly? I really don't know yet. There are a few possibilities, and as always, I will pick one of those. Bis bald!